Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Scout Prepper channel. And tonight, a newer topic that I haven't really gone over before, and that's going to be emergency communications. I'm going to do a little philosophy on emergency communica communications and why you need them, and then we'll talk about the radio specifically, the Baofeng UV5R. This is a neat handheld that I've chosen to play with a little bit and get some accessories for. So, I am real weak in emergency communications. It was my worst area if you divide your preps into areas. So food, water, emergency kits, stuff at a remote location like your deer lease, stuff in your vehicle, things like that. So you've got a lot of gear probably, but a lot of you probably suffer from poor communications capabilities just like I did. I don't have a ham radio license. And I think that I was a little bit lulled into thinking, well, it's okay because I'm a police officer, I have a radio. I even have a take-home car as a detective, which has an installed radio inside of it, plus my portable on my belt. But the deal is, remember that if you're a police officer, that's just going to be to talk to your local or your area, regional, police channels. It's not going to be to talk to your buddies. It's not going to be to talk to... Uh, the family channels or anything like that or any custom repeaters or out of your county or what have you in most cases in a lot of cases that's just going to be your local law enforcement use because that's exactly why they gave it to you so on your personal uh, in your personal inventory on a personal note you need to have your own radio so that you can program it your own way and that leads me to why would you buy this versus the Midland or the Motorola Talkabouts or something like that, the normal family style or you know Bash Pro Cabela style radios that you've seen before. Little walkie-talkies is what we call them. That was the question that Taz, who you've seen on some of my other stuff, asked me. Why would you need this versus one of the Motorola Talkabouts? Well, I have the Motorola Talkabouts. As a matter of fact, I have a real nice upper end pair. I think the 355s in camo and they stay at my deer lease in my little cabin with my brother that, that I hunt with my brother and my son my daughter and they stay up there when we get up to the cabin we plug them in to make sure they stay charged and we use them all the time and of course they're rated at 35 miles and that really translates to about one mile maybe two so those are neat they talk on the FRS and GMRS bands and GMRS goes a little farther than FRS, but you're supposed to only use GMRS if you have a license and the this and the that. And I'm not going to get into the specifics. You look it up. The family radios, realistically, everybody uses those channels and nobody really cares. So, if you have a radio like this, which are only about $35 on Amazon.com, now you can program in the FRS GMRS channels like you had on the Motorola's, the little walkie-talkies. And you could add some law enforcement channels, maybe listen only, especially for the civilian, you know, listen only so that you can hear what's going on in an emergency, in a hurricane, a tornado, a bad accident, some type of uh, grass fire in the area, what have you. Uh, in your local emergency, you could listen into your local law enforcement and you can customize it even further. Because you're a prepper, you can put in stuff like repeaters, from between your home and your deer lease or your office or the remote location that you travel to all the time or what have you so that now you have some communications even when you're in your different plans or the different areas you go to in case of an emergency like a broken down vehicle or what have you there are other uh, communications networks if you're a ham radio operator uh, by the way, you need to be to start using some of those ham channels. But if you're a ham radio operator, these days you can take the test pretty easily. Study online, take it online. Uh, you can get onto some of those ham radio communications networks. There's stuff geared for uh, preppers. There's stuff geared for local clubs and regional clubs. And you can get out to it if you can hit repeaters a lot of times on your portables. And of course, if you get into this, you may get hooked and get into base stations, uh, a radio installed in your car and all those good things and I'm talking about a ham radio so it, with this dual band UHF VHF radio you can now customize it to include FRS GMRS law enforcement and emergency services for listening capabilities and again other farther off law enforcement emergency services or repeaters or custom channels that your group uh, is designated to use. So that's the beauty of these. You can program it. Now, not necessarily going to program it on this video because it's terrible to program this radio 
just a side note, as, uh, in the radio form, to just use this keypad and these menu buttons is a horrific event. You will throw this in the trash. It is much easier to do with some free software that exists on the web. I can't remember the name of it too, guys, and I'm sorry about that. I don't have a laptop with me tonight, but I think it was like Spark or something. All I did is I YouTubed, I got searched on YouTube, uh, Beofang UV5R programming. In one of the first few videos, the guy shows the free software. You also have to buy a cable for $7.95, which I did when I bought this, and that gives you the ability to hook this to your computer. You have to install the cable because it's a new driver for the cable. Then you download the software and pick the radio model you have, and you program it in more of a spreadsheet, lines and rows, columns. Okay, and that's much easier. And you can set a lot of the custom options like talk, no talk, you know, receive only, uh, or receive and transmit. So again, that you can customize some of the law enforcement stuff because you do not want to hit the button and accidentally talk uh, on a law enforcement channel, especially you know if you're a civilian or if your law enforcement have no immediate purpose. It's an embarrassment, and everybody's going to laugh at you for talking on the radio. So those, that's some of the background on the UV5R. It actually comes with this battery, which makes it just the standard length of the radio, not the extended battery. It comes with the box with the charger and the charger is a desktop style charger, a cradle, you just lay it in there and it plugs in AC. I bought for seven dollars or excuse me for five dollars, five ninety five. I bought a, ch a car adapter and I thought that the car adapter plugged in here. Of course you know all these guys don't describe their stuff very well on the Bay of Fang, but uh, it actually plugs into the cradle so that you can plug your cradle in in the car then put your radio in, but no problem, it works. The standard battery is an 1800 milliamp battery. The extended battery, which you see the lengths are much longer, is a 3800 milliamp battery, so over double the amount of battery. And it also comes with this, which is an earbud and um, lapel mic assembly, though it is uh, functional, I'm going to go with flimsy. So a little smaller in cord diameter and uh, lapel mic, all that stuff. That's not exactly what I'm looking for in a, in a duty quality setup. You know, something that you can really count on. So if I, again, I'm trying to set this thing up. I'm trying to program this to use in my communication group. So a couple of buddies and my family could all have one of these. And then in a disaster, we could talk to each other in the same town or what have you. To we're in the same area, we're talking to each other with these in an effort to try to coordinate where we're going or what have you. Remember that cell service could be down. Um, the standard FRS, GMRS frequencies could be very busy with other people on them in times of a disaster, which I've seen before. And again, if you've set up some custom frequencies or local repeater frequencies that your club uses because you're a ham radio operator, then you're a lot more covered. It's very functional, it's very clear, it's very easy to use once you program it. And one thing that I did like, it talks to you. It's got a cool little girl like on uh, GPS navigation. But you can use frequency mode or channel mode. And frequency mode shows you the frequency, obviously. Channel mode shows you, you program this in on the spreadsheet when you're doing it on the free software. You put the names of the channel. So you could say, you know, Radio Club 1 or, uh, you know, a Dallas PD 1 or what have you, whatever you're programming in. So I do like that. You can customize the names for all your channels and it holds a ton of them. I'm sorry I don't have that number with me, but I think 255 or something, it holds a bunch of channels, more than you'll ever use. So you could program in quite a bit, you know, kind of sky's the limit situation where maybe you have 40 or 50 channels program, programmed in and then literally go next, 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 next and scroll through them all to get, you know, the farther you go to cover different areas or what have you as you're traveling or if you're in an emergency or what have you. Also has weather band capability and all that good stuff. Now, one thing that I added to this, it came with this antenna standard. They have longer ones, but I didn't really see a need. It comes with the clip standard. It's very small and lightweight, as you can see. The regular battery is pretty is uh, palm sized. My thought here is I'm going to keep this battery in my uh, get home bag, my vehicle bag with the radio because if I run out of my big battery, I could swap this in if it's charged. And I'll show you real quick. I'll move a couple things around. I did bring in the old Rush 72 from 511 to kind of show you how I rigged it 
to carry this because remember you can't just have it turned off in your bag you have to be able to operate this and i wanted to be able to operate it while i have my backpack on just like you would if you're a police officer you can use your radio from your belt or what have you but of course you can't have that on when you have on a backpack that has a waist belt so move this stuff aside and here's what i did i bought a 511 and i think it was 15 dollars a 511 radio pouch. Okay, right there. And it won't zoom out anymore, but there it is, the 511 radio pouch. It's no top. It's got the bungee cord retention, which can be adjusted here and adjusted here. This is a Velcro field, as you see. And it's Molly cable. You see it's on the 511 Rush 72 on the side, beside my water bottle. And uh, the radio just goes in here. And I think it was $15. So... I use this mic and the reason is I want to this is more police style and this is a lot more robust police and military are used to stuff like this versus this little uh, little flimsy lapel mic and stuff number one it's a lot thicker cord it's bungee it's a curly cord and this can attach with the clip that's included to my uh, strap so this goes to my strap on my left side. Why on my left side? Because I'm right-handed. That means if I have my handgun or my rifle shouldered in my right hand or on my right shoulder, the mic isn't interfering with it. Remember, if this was on my right shoulder, I couldn't, I couldn't shoulder my rifle. So I don't have anything on my right shoulder strap or on my right shoulder of my chest rig or anything like that. And again, this whole setup could be adapted to a chest rig, could be adapted to a belt pouch, could be adapted to inside of a jacket system, whatever you're needing, you know, or it's in your vehicle, it's in your console, and you pull it out with the external mic on or off. I loop the cord through the backpack, see the Molly straps, it goes across the top, Molly strap down into my into the, the belt pouch, the uh, Molly pouch. So that way it runs over the top without getting tangled up or any anything. As you see, it's just looped through the different. Uh, molly straps which are already on the pack and it's on my left side so you can talk now one little thing to look for this was described as having a hole in the side so that you could plug in an earbud they lied it doesn't it was only seven or eight dollars and that's fine it is a Baofeng gen genuine uh, Chinese piece of crap mic but it doesn't have the hole so now I can't put an earbud in it if I use the lapel mic or if I use the uh, yeah the, the lapel mic and that really kind of upsets me because that's not how it was touted. I really wanted that capability because I could have put in an earbud to hear so that nobody else could hear me, or I could have plugged that directly into electronic hearing protection that you might use on the range. So if you're using this radio for a range day or a competition day or something like that, which could happen, you could have plugged in that to your ear pro and then heard, eh, it didn't have it. They, they lied to me to be quite honest. And that's whatever. Um, God will get them for that. So that's it. And I hope you guys enjoy that. I hope this gives you something to think about. And I hope that you get some type of emergency communication for you and your family. Because remember, this could be great in a bad, bad weather situation. It could be great in some type of a, a road hazard situation or a car trouble situation. It doesn't have to always be... And I hope you guys always keep this in mind. It doesn't have to always be zombies and bloodshed. I know that the, the craze is kind of fun, and I know that everybody gets real paranoid. I'm a detective for a living. I don't believe anyone, and I'm always paranoid. So, I, But the prepping makes everything worse, so don't get into that mindset. Remember that this is most likely going to help you through a daily emergency that's just occurring to you or your family or your neighborhood a power outage, a weather event, some type of car trouble, an auto wreck, uh, something in the big town where you have to get back to the little town when you're commuting, things like that. It's not necessarily going to be an apocalypse or an economic meltdown or an EMP. But I guess it could, and that's why we prep. Well, guys, as always, I really appreciate the views and the subscriptions. Keep them coming. As I mentioned in some of the last videos, the Facebook channels got shut down 
by Facebook because they said Scout Tactical is not a real person, which is a bunch of crap. So I've restarted those pages uh, with just a few likes on Facebook. Of course, remember Scout Prepper is part of a three-channel network, Scout Prepper, Scout Tactical, and Scout Hunter. Check them all out and subscribe. Check us out on the web at scouttactical.com, which also has the link to the eBay store. And as always, thanks for watching.